When working with digital modes, it's critical to have accurate time when you're in the field. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Often I am asked how I get accurate time when I'm in the field. Accurate time is needed for applications like WSJTX and JSA Call. Sure, there's some workarounds that you can use even if you don't have something like a GPS, but it's much easier to get that accurate time when you have a GPS connected to your computer. Now, I've got four different ways that I typically use when I'm in the field, and I'm going to walk through each of those today and show you how to get them configured on a Linux system. The first one that we're going to take a look at is those inexpensive white USB GPS units that you can pick up over on Amazon. Those things typically can be found for less than 20 bucks. I have one here in my hand. Now mine I have cut out of the case and then shrink wrapped it just to make it a little bit smaller. The only downside of that is I, always, uh, I can't always see that little blinking light that lets me know I've got a lock. But this first method will work with this or any other of the flavors of USB GPSs that you'll find on Amazon. Let's jump over to the computer and take a look at how to get this thing configured. Okay, so let's start by showing you the long way to get the USB GPS installed. First thing you're going to do after you've got your USB GPS plugged in is type out ls space forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash by hyphen ID. And you should get returned the link to your GPS device. In my case, it's right there. Now, you'll want to copy that information um, and then we're going to go ahead and modify the GPSD file. We'll do that with sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash GPSD. Now, remember right here that this is in dev serial by ID. Let's go ahead and press return on this command. It's going to ask you for your sudo password. We'll give it that. And what you would do is you would come right down here to devices and you'll see that mine is already configured correctly. There's that forward slash dev serial by ID. And then I pasted in that long link that we copied just a second ago. To get out of this, you're going to press Control S to save and Control X to exit. Now that's the hard way. Let me show you guys a much easier way to accomplish this. If you're running Linux, I have wrote an application called the GPS Update Tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and start that tool and right here when it comes up you're going to have to give it your sudo password so we'll give it that real quick and say continue now in this particular case we're using a usb type gps so we'll just use the drop down to select usb let's go ahead and click continue uh, it's going to tell you to connect the gps and we'll click continue one more time and it will actually list out your options that you have for the gps device connected in this particular case i've only got one so i would obviously choose that one and then choose ok it's going to go ahead and update that file that i just showed you guys in the background so you don't have to do any of that copying and pasting or anything else now this application is one of the choices in 7.3 Linux, but I'll also leave a link down in the description below. You can download this GPS update tool as an individual script, even if you're not running 7.3 Linux. Once you have gone one of these two ways and updated your GPS file, the next thing you want to do is just confirm that the GPS uh, information is being fed into the system. We can do that by simply typing C GPS and hitting return. And you'll see I do have some satellites showing up over here. I don't quite have enough to get a lock. You need four satellites in order to get a lock. 
you can see that I only have locks on three satellites and it's telling the or the system is saying don't use these others it's probably because I don't have a strong enough signal being inside this is one of the things you run into so you'll need to uh, move this thing closer to a window in order to get a lock so these little guys aren't hard to configure at all however I use these probably the least when I'm in the field Typically, I'm going to use one of these other three methods that we're about to cover. The first one of those three is your mobile device. Without a cell phone connection, you can still get the GPS data and you can stream that data from the phone over to the laptop. You can do this with Android. You can also do this with iOS. And guys, I've done videos on how to configure both of these applications before, and I will do my best to leave a link down in the description below that goes over that, uh, that or shows you where that other video is. One word, though, of caution. On the Android side, the app is called GPSD Forwarder. I don't think you're able to find that in the Google Play Store anymore. You're probably going to have to get that from F-Droid. So, Keep that in mind when you go looking for it if you're on an Android device. The one for iOS, which is GPS to IP, should still be available for you in the App Store. But let's go ahead and show you how to get those configured and running on your Linux laptop. Next up, let's take a look at grabbing the GPS data from our phone. Again, I'm going to use the GPS update tool to do this. I'm going to go ahead and give it my sudo password again. This time from the dropdown, I'm going to choose phone right here and then click continue. It's going to ask me for the IP address. In this case, we just give it a star so it will read from all of them, but we do need to give it the correct port number. In my case, I am using port 11123 and this is defined on the phone, not inside of Linux. So make sure that your port number here matches whatever you chose to use inside the phone app. Now I'm doing this from Android, but this is perfectly uh, capable of being done from an iPhone as well. Let's go ahead and hit continue and it'll tell me that it's been updated. Now real quick, I want to take a look at the GPSD information and you'll see that my devices right here has been updated to use that uh, UDP connection to grab the GPS data from the phone. And guys, you don't even need a cell signal in order to use the GPS on your phone. And that's why it's one of my preferred ways to get GPS data in the field. Now, let me get out of this. So I'm going to exit and then let's go ahead and take a look at C GPS again and look at the difference that makes. Because the phone has a much better GPS unit in it, I'm still inside, still sitting in the exact same position I was before when we were messing with the USB version. But look and it, over here on the right hand side at all of the different satellites that I have a lock on and that is almost instantaneous. You can see my grid square and all of the other GPS information in that left hand panel. So that makes it really, really easy to get GPS data when you're in the field. Now, hands down, these next two ways that I get GPS in the field are probably the ones I'm using the vast majority of the time these days. If I'm out and I've got the 705 with me, well, I can use a USB cable connected to the radio and to the laptop to pull the GPS data off of this rig and feed it into the laptop. And since I've already got it with me and the GPS is on board, well, why would I use something else? Let's jump over to the laptop and I'll show you how to get that configured. After the 705 is connected to the computer with a USB cable, let's go ahead and take a look at the way that shows up. I'm gonna run that ls forward slash dev serial by ID command again. And you'll see that we have two different entries for the ICOM 705. The first one is going to be used for CAT control. The second one here that ends in IF02 is the one we want to use for the GPS. So once again, I'm going to start that GPS update tool. 
and this time we're going to choose USB again. Now we'll go ahead and click continue, tells us to connect it, we've already got it connected, and this time we're going to see two different entries here in the drop down. With the 705, you definitely want to use option two. We'll go ahead and use that one or choose that one and then click OK. It'll tell me that the GPS has been updated. Once again, let's go take a quick peek at that GPSD file. So we'll go into there and you'll see the devices has been updated again, giving me that dev serial by ID and then the USB uh, ICOM GPS link out here beside it. So we'll exit out of this and then once again run CGPS so that we can take a look at that data. We don't get quite as many satellites as we did with the phone, but we still get plenty of satellites to use for a GPS fix. And the final method I use usually involves one of the Kenwood HTs, either the D74 or the D75. This applies to both of them because we can grab the GPS uh, data off of either of those radios and pull it into the computer over Bluetooth. So if I don't have my 705 with me, I'm going to grab one of the HTs and grab the data that I need, the GPS data that I need from that radio. Now, one thing, I've tried to get that same data with these Chinese radios, both the UV Pro and the VGC radio, and I have had zero luck with either of those HTs. If anybody else has had luck pulling the GPS data over Bluetooth, please reach out to me via email. But let me go ahead and show you guys how quick and easy it is to set up one of these radios to grab that GPS data. Now, when we're using the Kenwood D74 or the Kenwood D75, we can grab that information over Bluetooth. What you're looking at on the screen is an application that I have written to specifically set up these connections and make life easier for you. I'm just about done testing this and I'll be releasing this over on Patreon in probably the next 30 to 45 days. Let's go ahead and it says right here, no active connections at this particular moment. We'll go ahead and choose GPS right here. And it's just going to give us a note that uh, reminds us that we need to enable Bluetooth, but we need to turn off the TNC and the APRS modem. After we get both of those done, we simply click OK. And we get a nice note that tells us the GPS has been updated. You may have heard that little beep in the background. That told me that the radio was connected to Bluetooth or over Bluetooth to the laptop that we're using. I'm just going to click OK and we'll scoot this over here out of the way. First thing we want to do is once again go take a look at that GPSD file. You'll notice this time we are using RFCOM0. Now I have done a video in the past. If I don't forget I'll leave a link to that down in the description below that shows you how to set this connection up manually. But in this case it's much quicker to use this TNC Blue app. By the way guys that TNC Blue will also work with the VGC radios. It will work with the BTEC radio and it will work with the MobiLink 2, 3, and 4. Let me go ahead and get out of this uh, screen here and let's run that C GPS command one more time to take a look at the data that we've got coming in. Now, interesting in this one, you don't get a list of satellites over here that we're using. However, we do still get all of the correct GPS data that will go ahead and automatically set the clock for us on our computer. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head out. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.